Prince Charles celebrated his 70th birthday last month, with his mother the Queen good-naturedly celebrating her son as a true duchy original. Prince William and Prince Harry's father has raised some eyebrows for his unconventional beliefs when it comes to subjects as diverse as architecture, medicine and religion. 2015 YouTube documentary The Madness of Prince Charles delves into some of the Prince of Wales' more controversial beliefs and habits. It reveals how he found an intellectual guru in the South African writer, Lawrence Van Der Post. The two apparently bonded over the heir to the throne's interest in psychoanalyst Carl Gustav Jung, who Van Der Post had been friends with. However psychoanalysis was not the only thing the pair had in common, biographer J.D.F. Jones explains, the prince must have picked up on another aspect of Lauren's life which is that he was a womanizer. The documentary reveals how, Van Der Post had a wife and a long-term mistress. His and Charles' intellectual hero Jung also had two women in his life. Van der Post saw nothing wrong in the prince having a wife and mistress. Prince Charles made the 75-year-old author Prince William's godfather when he was christened in 1982. Jones adds, It is obviously absurd to appoint a man of 75 to be the godfather to your baby. I'm convinced Charles was saying, whether he rationalized it or not. This man in my godfather, I put in his hands my own spiritual and moral life. Earlier in the documentary, Jones reveals how Van Der Post was the single most important influence on Charles' personal development. He also says, Lawrence was an immense flatterer. Van Der Post's letters to Charles show him constantly praising this young man, Kumper, ing him with the finest thinkers of our time, he adds. To an impressionable young man it would have been very impressive. Van Der Post died in 1996 at the age of 90. J.D.F. Jones' biography of Van Der Post, published in 2001, confirmed that he had a secret child after an affair with a 14-year-old girl. It also revealed that he spoke with Margaret Thatcher at length, especially during the Falklands.